come from? Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd say probably we, we wanted our flight suits to be the same color as the astronauts. <laughs> but actually, uh, the, the story, um, back in the very first season in 1946, uh, the team had just got on the road. A guy named Lieutenant Commander Butch Boris uh, was the flight leader. And they didn't have a name. They were trying to figure out a name. They were just the Navy flight demonstration team at the time. And uh, they, they were doing an air show in New York City, and they ended up uh, out having dinner at a, uh, a restaurant club that was called the Blue Angel. And somebody said, hey, that'd be a great name for the team. And it stuck that very weekend, and that's where it started. So that was 71 years ago. Blue Angels! stays on the team for two years flying in the demonstration, uh, as well as our uh, ground support officers like the maintenance officer, he's here for two years. Uh, Joe in the back there is our public affairs officer, he's on the team for two years. Uh, and so the, the competition can be very uh, very intense for the, those positions, uh, and, and then the team actually selects. So we, uh, we get a chance to get to know all the applicants through the first part of the season. Uh, we do a lot of research into their backgrounds. Uh, we, we pour over their applications, and we spend a lot of time talking with them at show sites as we go around uh, the country in the spring and early summer. Uh, we'll neck that down to finalists, and then the finalists will come down to Pensacola for uh, about three or four days uh, for an extensive interview process, and then out of that, we'll select who we want, and we'll submit that up the chain of command to the Chief of Naval Air Training, and ultimately to the Air Boss for the Chief of Naval Air Forces. Uh, for approval, and it's an analogous process for all of our enlisted team members, and an analogous process for the uh, the commanding officer and flight leader position. Though uh, that position is selected um, by our boss, at the chief of naval air training, and a, a board of admirals and captains that that basically does the same thing, but just at a higher level. Wednesday is bigger than most shows combined throughout for the entire weekend, right? And uh, just the 
the enormous magnitude of what is Oshkosh is really exciting for, for us to be a part of. So thanks for having us, first of all. I would further add that it's really a blessing for all of us to travel around the country and see different cities. Because if you're in the military, you, you join the Navy, for example, and you see the world. And we've spent time in the Mediterranean and the Western Pacific and the Persian Gulf and all over the seas, but we haven't necessarily been to all over middle America. And so we get a chance while we do air shows to go visit the heartland, to visit the Rockies, to see this country that we don't always get to see. And so to see these cities and to meet their people and get a chance to express our love for naval aviation is really why we're here. So I would say that's the best thing for us. From behind the spectator area.
and then dumps oil into the exhaust, and the heat of the exhaust turns into smoke. the average number of flight hours that each of the members have before they join the uh, Blue Angels team? Good question. Boss, you want to take that one? Boss? Yeah, sure. Uh, for the uh, average number of flight hours, the minimum we're targeting is 1,250 uh, tactical jet hours. So that would include the uh, training time in the Navy trainer jets and then uh, fleet time, typically in F-18s. Uh, for the, uh, and, and often we have uh, pilots come to the team with a little bit more than that. Uh, for the number one position, it's a 3,000 hour tactical jet requirement. So that's 180% the speed of sound, which is about 730 miles an hour. So if you multiply that times 1.8, that's what is advertised for our aircraft. We're not allowed to do that during the air show. The Federal Aviation Administration requires us to be subsonic, unfortunately. If you call your congressman. Would you generally stay subsonic? And for us at this show, the fastest airspeeds you'll see are just over 700 miles an hour. The three women smoothly shift back into the Blue Angel Diamond. <laughs> Barksdale, and I uh, put a hole in the jet, so 
uh, took us, uh, we got to pull the wings off and get it put on a truck to truck it to a, a facility that can repair it. That's going to take about six months to repair it. So I'm not a big fan of birds. So. <laughs> Break. Pulling up through vertical, he'll roll the formation 90 degrees and perform a split S, finishing with a dynamic separation maneuver. Formation pulls to level. Each pilot will perform an individual brake turn and exit the flight line in a separate direction. The Blue Angel Barrel Roll. Katie Higgins on the team flying Fat Albert the previous two seasons, uh, and then uh, this year we don't have any uh, female <laughs> pilots on the team uh, or officers on the team. And it really it just depends if you go back to that question on the applicants um, when we get the applicants in. So um, I've I think we've all flown and served with uh, just absolutely outstanding females, both pilots, uh, ground officers. Um, Marines, Navy, uh, they're out there and they're doing an incredible job and I can tell you uh, there's zero difference uh, in a male versus a female pilot in terms of capabilities, zero. It's purely just based on who's interested in coming to the team and then once we get those applicants, uh, making sure it's a good fit. And that's the primary thing that we're looking for. Uh, we don't select based on gender at all. Uh, there are zero uh, gender discriminants that we would ever use. Uh, it's just based on uh, applicants. And so this year, uh, and like the previous year, we didn't have any female applicants. Uh, but I can end on this note that I, I promise you, it's not if, but when the first female Blue Angel is flying in the Delta, so number one through six. Uh, and I know we'll keep having uh, Blue Angels flying Fat Albert that are females. <laughs>
do you manage your, uh, successfully manage your uh, relationships with your significant others traveling so much? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> So we are typically home about one day a week, uh, home all day, and then we practice for a couple other days during the week. Uh, you really have to prioritize your spouse, not only when you're home, but when you're on the road. You can't just uh, detach yourself and, and not FaceTime or make a phone call while you're gone. So I think uh, all of us are married up here. So every single one of us takes some time throughout the day to reach back home and make sure that our wives know what's going on and uh, they kind of know what our day to day schedule it is. Um, the majority of the time when we're out, we're out at night with, with each other, but we're always checking in no matter where we're at or what we're doing, and I think that helps to ease some of the, uh, some of the fears from any spouse that would be back home 300 days a year with their husbands going out at night uh, doing stuff, so uh, I don't know if you know about. Yeah, no, it's, all, it's about communication, and sometimes it takes a little bit to learn that. Uh, and the, but the learning curve is steep. And in fact, we do have a couple of spouses and family members here. Back at the so, and along, and also enjoying the experience of, of being a Blue Angel is also a great, great thing to, for the entire family. If I could just um, add one thing on that. Um, we are, all of us on the team, feel very blessed by the support we get from our spouses and all of our, our kids too. Most of us have uh, young children and that is the hardest part of the tour, of the, the incredible privilege and opportunity to be a Blue Angel is to uh, also spend so much time away from home. Um, sometimes though, we get to bring, uh, we get to join our families on the road at, at a special event like this and that makes it uh, all the more worthwhile. But the real heroes are those our spouses and kids at home that, that essentially we're gone for almost 300 days out of the year and they're holding everything together. They're doing all the hard work while we're getting to go uh, fly air shows and, and meet you know, incredible people like yourself all over the country. So uh, really the, uh, the credit goes to them. stated uh, 2019 as a goal to have a team in the Super Hornet. That's still being to be determined based on a variety of factors with the airplanes and the engineering work that will go into converting them. Um, but it could be as soon as 2019, it could be a little bit later, uh, but it's definitely coming.
in front of the crowd, the Delta is making its approach to the flight line. Approaching center point, the entire formation will separate in dramatic fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Angel Delta Breakout. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor and our pleasure to perform for you right here at Oshkosh. 